You're tuning in to Stellar Cycles, hosted by Alina Salza and Eva Brown. Join us weekly as we delve into the science, spirituality, and cultural significance of our feminine cycles. Get ready to align with your natural rhythms, take charge of your patterns, and embrace a holistic approach to feminine wellness. Are all systems go? All systems go. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Stellar Cycles. We're back to talk to you guys about your ovulatory phase, also known as the main event of your cycle. Hey, Eva. Hi, Alina. How's it going? Today's such a great day. We have sun finally after a week of rain. Mm -hmm. And I'm back in town from a adventure in LA with a girlfriend of mine. Are we jumping right into updates, by the way, or did you want to talk about anything else? <laughs> oh, yeah, we can jump right into updates, then we can tell them what we're going to be talking about in the episode. So we can do personal Perfect updates segue. out of the way first. So yeah, let's hear about your LA trip. How long were you yeah. gone for? I'm looking at you right now, and it makes me just want to be conversational with you. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, let me get you a bit about my trip. Please. Let's talk. Happy to finally be here. Four days there. We mostly spent it at the mall, went to Javier's shopped a lot as you know it was my therapy nice <laughs> we'll save that for another which time. mall was it like century city or mm -hmm. which part of la beverly hills okay here nice. so probably yeah that's, that's century city uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah i just went we enjoyed came back we went hiking around the hollywood sign and the mountain was completely green oh my i can't even imagine because it's always so like dusty Brown. out there yeah yeah and it's yeah, LA's been getting doused with the rain, so I can imagine. Yeah, that was honestly a treat. And during this time, I was in my luteal phase. I We did sleep in. I really listened to my body. Perfect time for me to be with my girlfriend and just have some home time, really, with her. And we did a lot of business as well. We set up some business. Might be going to Vegas tomorrow if all goes well. Mm. Yeah, we'll have a lot of more exciting things to tell you guys in the future. Sick. What about you? Honestly, I'm I started my period this week. It was a little rough, but it's kind of a little rough on the first days usually, but then the the rest of the time it's not too bad. I did a lot of walking. I've been doing yoga. The walking has really been helpful, especially like since working inside throughout the day. It's been such a treat for me to just leave the house in the middle of the day and just go walk around, and mm -hmm. get my steps in. And I'm also really excited for my energetic new year glow up. And by that, I mean like the new year with the spring starting this next weekend. So I went and got some new skincare things that I'm really excited to implement once my period is done. So once I head into my follicular phase, I have all these new products that I'm super excited to open up and start using. I got that LED mask that I was telling oh. you about. So I'm going to, you know, walk around the house like one of those you know what I'm talking about? It's One of those. Wireless. Yeah, it's wireless and it it straps behind your head. Nice. So yeah, you can just walk around wearing it. Mine's really heavy. I can't wait to see what yeah. it's like. Yeah, it didn't seem that heavy in the box, so hopefully it'll be chilling. Cool. And I got some new vitamin C for my skin for the morning routine. What brand? All Dr. Dennis Gross. Cool. Love his stuff. I used one of his things a while ago. It works for your skin. Yeah, honestly. His products are some of my favorites. He has these face tanning wipes. Mm -hmm. So you know how oh, your face, yeah. if it's like, if you're using sunscreen, if you're keeping your face out of the sun, it's not going to be the same color as the rest of your body. Mm -hmm. So those are really great because they do have the AHAs and BHAs in it to like resurface and polish your skin, but it also gets it tan. It looks great. Win-win. Like yeah. I'm sold, actually. That's right. perfect. Because, you know, it. anytime you exfoliate, you're also taking yeah. off the color. So it's it's literally a total win-win. What a genius product. And you were telling me about sort of tights, were you getting into? <laughs> Sheer tux. I just saw it. An mm -hmm. ad on TikTok got me, like all of us. We are all influenced. <laughs> I hate that. If you guys probably have experience where your tights just rip constantly, I feel like I'm mm -hmm. going through them too often, especially in the wintertime. So on this ad, they're completely, they guarantee that they won't rip, that they are, they're holding a, a weight mm -hmm. in between the tights. So mm -hmm. I bought two pairs. They were on sale. I highly recommend to all the ladies. Have you tried them on? Yeah, yeah, they fit so good. Nice. They have this weird line going. It's a thick line going down the mm -hmm. middle. So it's not as smooth as I would like it to look, but it's fine. No one would ever see that. Okay. I'm definitely going to have to try those out. 
Yeah, they have them. I got it opaque, brown, oh, okay, and black. Nice. The see-through black tights are such a vibe, no I matter what. Guarantee it for for thirty wears or something. Oh, which I thought was really wow. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, do we have any other updates? I'm trying to think. We have Honestly, Gary's. yeah, we always have Gary. Yeah, hot dog. Pod dog is here. He's just chilling on the couch. He's taking a little nap while we're thinking, talking. You know, books, habits, habits. Just journal. We're I always recently meditating. I finished this audio book, uh, Cosmic Serpents or Cosmic Serpent. Cool. <laughs> so crazy because it basically talks about like the indigenous people who, you know, how they've been like using the plants and stuff in the Amazon to have like hallucinogenic experiences. I hope people aren't logging off right now, but well, you know, if you've heard of ayahuasca, it's like this really, really crazy, intense, like plant that like makes you throw up and makes you like see certain things. People have been using those plants for thousands of years in those types of cultures. Well, basically, the book is about how they've literally what a common hallucination that they've all been seeing and that people will write down and keep record of is these kind of entwined holographic snakes that look like DNA strands. So the point of the book was about how they've basically like in the indigenous people in the Amazon have been hallucinating and seeing like DNA strands for like thousands of years, just not knowing how to describe it until like modern times when DNA was discovered like as a molecule in the lab. And like, you know, we started getting those pictures of like the double helix connected with the things, but it's really been revealing itself to people for thousands of years can you imagine back in the day as a tribe member you're now probably worshiping serpents Mm -hmm. because you're thinking what you're seeing is snakes but it's actually a download of dna Mm -hmm. and of course that makes sense now that as we colonize as bigger countries colonize those tribes they may have seen the serpents something that I mean, they didn't want anything from the indigenous tribes to like fall, crawl over into what they were setting up in their religion. So, of course, they look at serpents as something that's evil. Yeah. And maybe it never was. It yeah. Was- the book also discusses kind of like all human and mammals kind of have this fear of snakes and serpents. It's almost kind of programmed into us. And what? yeah, like whether it's from, you know, venomous attacks in the past, you know, just like knowing that avoid snakes. But if you look at the symbol of medicine, right, you look at any like hospital sign or anything, it has like snakes twisting around a pole. Isn't that interesting? So that's like also the sign of health and like, uh, you know, healthcare. I wish I had more time these days. I would go down (laughs) such a rabbit hole on this, man. Well, it was definitely an interesting listen. But Today, our podcast episode is moving forward from the follicular phase to the ovulatory phase, kind of the midpoint of your cycle. And the goal of this episode is to show you guys that there's a lot of boosts that come with ovulation. Understanding the ovulatory phase and how it affects our physical and mental state can be helpful for us women in today's world. So by recognizing the strengths and opportunities presented during this phase, we can better plan and optimize our personal lives to take advantage of this naturally occurring boost in energy and creativity. Yay, the Super Bowl! The actual Super Bowl (laughs) of your cycle. This is for the girls. Yeah, so like I said before, it's about mid point in your cycle around the window of time around the release of an egg from your ovary so this typically lasts around three to four days time although some consider the ovulatory phase to be closer to six or seven days you'll notice in your phone or tracking app where it tracks your fertility and your periods it'll highlight around like six to seven days around a week of kind of like your fertile window so that can be counted as the ovulatory phase as well cool And the themes you guys are going, you're getting into during this phase are self-worth, magnetism, and communion. I feel this so hard when I have ovulate, when I'm in my ovulation phase. I love it. What would you say, which season does the ovulatory phase represent? Definitely summer. Mm -hmm. It's that light, vibrant, you want to be outdoors, want to be around people. You never want it to end. Kind of like your ovulatory phase. (laughs) You're like, I could feel like this all the time. That's exactly how I feel. Yeah, so it relates to summer, which means that you're feeling it's warm, inviting. We feel sexier during the summertime. 
<laughs> totally. In her cute dresses. You want to wear an outfit. Mm -hmm. The sun feels so good on your skin. So you just want to, you know, show more skin. Mm -hmm. Soak it all in. You're self-assured with wise energy. People are naturally flocking to your warm, loving energy at this time. Mm -hmm. And this really reminds me of just I... We've spoken about it before in other episodes that during the ovulation phase is really where I like to, I always have a networking event. I'm always out like being around new people. I want them to experience that energy and naturally things attract to me around that mm -hmm. time. The manifestations that come around during my ov ovulation phase are insane. I swear I could just think I want pizza and then all of a sudden someone's um, offering you pizza. I swear. <laughs> It's really easy around that time. And I think it's because that energy comes so naturally, right? Great. Your confidence, your confidence and your communication are at a all time high. And this is because your hormones are really helping you out at this time. So going into your hormones and your feelings, again, the FSH really makes sure that the eggs that were growing in your fol follicular phase are mature and ready to go the luteinizing hormone spikes making one of those eggs pop out and that's the event of ovulation during this time the egg that was released from the ovary will usually hang out in your pelvic cavity until it's fertilized by sperm and if it if it's not it'll just normally pass out of your body and you won't even notice it bye bye during this time, yeah, bye-bye little egg. During this time, the peak of estrogen that you're getting around ovulation increases your energy as well as boosting your collagen production and metabolism. What else does estrogen support you with? It helps maintain the growth of the immune system cells that are in your uterus, so it maintains that balance. And Another thing that is surging at this time is testosterone. So that's what is kind of giving you the sex drive, also giving you that boost in confidence too. And again, this is your body's prime time to get pregnant. So the testosterone is going to drop after ovulation. You might feel a little bit of a dip in energy right after you ovulate. And that's because you passed that window when it was the prime time for you to get pregnant. So around this time when you're testosterone is surging, you're a lot more likely to take risks and you're going to be a lot less bothered about losses too in this window of time. Another thing is during the ovulatory phase, the combination of estrogen and testosterone gives you the energy to accomplish the ideas you created in the follicular phase. So while in the follicular phase, you are very you know, all over the board with what you want to do. Now you have the stamina and endurance to really see those things through that you were so inspired by in the early follicular phase. Now, while you were feeling very confident and maybe a little sharp during the follicular phase, now you're feeling more womanly, more motherly, just radiating love like the sun in your ovulatory phase. Do you want to talk about what's happening in the body due to these changes? Well, the cells in your body are literally aligning to make you more attractive. Ooh, <laughs> that's a bonus if you ask me. Seriously, your pelvic gets slightly, your pelvic gets slightly wider. Your hair gets shinier. Your eyes as well get shinier and brighter. Basically, everything's working in your favor to draw in that mate, but also draw in any other desire that you have. You're just really take advantage of this time. You're lit up like a Christmas tree. So by um, so you can really power through your week and in other physical the other physical side side effects that you're going to feel what word would you changes changes signs signs would be your vaginal discharge it's going to change into a white creamy almost clear and slippery like egg yolk mm -hmm. the egg white and it'll, it's going to increase the output yeah so you're gonna be a little more wetter at this time mm -hmm. so to speak in layman's terms yeah. all to increase to increase your chances of finding a mate, to really draw in that person who's attractive to you and draw in that sperm. Yeah, and to really trap it in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then after that peak day of your ovulation, after you have the dip, smaller dip in your hormones, that vaginal discharge, while it was really nice and helpful in that ovulation window, it's going to start kind of drying off. Totally. And something that's really cool is you might feel a tinge of pelvic pain when your egg is actually released. Mm -hmm. This is called... The middle schmertz? Yeah, the middle schmertz. It's a really cool <laughs> German name, probably for the man who discovered it. I don't know if it was a man or a woman, but... We'll Google later. But yeah, that's the name for the 
tinge of pain. You might feel it on your right. You might feel it on your left. And that's just a feeling of you ovulating. Your ovaries are um, are usually going to alternate. So when it does drop, it'll either be from the left side or the right side, right? Mm-hmm. That's so cute. I uh-huh. love that that happens. Yeah. It keeps them both active. And then you might have more energy, but also you could have a sense of depletion just depending on where you're at, who who you are, and what your mm-hmm. body's up to. And the last thing is, is you're going to be a lot more easily turned on during your ovulatory phase, which I'm sure we've all noticed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just easier to like get going, to get into yeah. the mood, into the flow. Do you get turned on on your during your menstruation phase? It depends. It really right. depends. Probably towards the end, there I are have times more blood flow. There so. are times where it's like this doesn't make sense. How turned on I am this isn't the time you know what I mean but yeah I think everyone can relate to like the period phase um cool so we have two desires yeah month Mm -hmm. because the rest it's really up to God and your man (laughs) you're turned (laughs) on right and so tell me about chakras yeah so the chakras that are most affected during this phase would be the heart chakra so before we talked about we talked about the root and the crown Those are more during your menstrual phase. Then you're moving into kind of your tummy area for your follicular phase. That's where all of your life force, your energy, your drive comes from. Then in the follicular phase, you're moving up to your heart chakra. So that's the source of that warm, loving energy that depicts this phase. And so the heart chakra is green. Green and pink. Mm -hmm. So women are a lot more drawn to these colors in their ovulatory phase. Pink because it represents like love and romance. And green because it represents like health and vitality and abundance. Summer. Mm -hmm. Creation. Yeah. So again, the chakra that represents this stage would be the heart chakra representing love, forgiveness, and compassion towards yourself and others beautiful i Mm -hmm. would love to when we get into food maybe we'll talk about it too because Mm -hmm. a lot of times it matches the color of the Mm -hmm. chakra it makes it so easy i bet you that aligns dude it totally does i'm already thinking about it let me not get ahead of myself we'll get there we'll get there (laughs) and you know our yin and yang specialist do you want to talk about which energy surrounds the ovulatory phase? Yeah, so during this phase, you're actually moving. You're moving from yin and you're moving into yang energy here. Mm-hmm. And it really, this energy is what is you're responsible for your creative juices. They were flowing during the follicular phase. So you want to mm-hmm. keep that momentum by actually working on your creative projects, mm-hmm. right? And yang is like, as far as I understand, it's a very external energy. Like it wants to share. It wants to like shine out on others, right? Yes, yes. Once, And we touched on it a lot, like mm-hmm. a lot in the, the previous episodes. So please check those ones out. And in this episode, we can chat on it a little bit more too. Your yang energy is doing that. It is accelerating. It's basically igniting, lighting fire, creating. What else? It's action oriented, very driven, always just making moves connecting with people it's not the chill energy yin is the chill energy Mm -hmm. that we're moving out of Mm -hmm. and the final thing that's really good to do here is really verbalize your thoughts and your feelings during this time if you bottle them up you will it'll actually lead to pms later on wow okay that's a hot tip this is this really goes along with anything in eastern medicine Everything is based off of energies, your yin and your yang energy, keeping your chi energy balanced. And if you at any point in your cycle, if you're going against these energies or if you're bottling things up, it's going to store get stored in your body. And the only way your body can release it then is through the symptoms as like PMS, for example. That's so amazing because I have my acupuncture appointment this last week. They took a pulse, took my pulse on both of my sides, both wrists, and they said that my left side is unbalanced and the left side is represents the yin mm-hmm. energy and right side is yang. And so interesting and so aligned too, because I've been getting like most of my breakouts on my left side, my yin side. Oh, it's a sign that you need to relax more. I'm so happy you relax yeah. this menstrual cycle. Totally relaxing more. So yeah, you know, your the yin and yang can also correspond to different sides of your body. So if you're seeing more pain or more inflammation or just more symptoms showing up on one side of the body more than the other, that could also be an indication of an unbalance of those yin and yang. Your body 
I, I always like to talk about Body Keeps Your Score. The score. Mm-hmm. Another book is Body Talks. Mm-hmm. It's literally talking to you, letting you know, like, hey, goodness. you're not balanced. And there's an entire industry built on silencing the signals from your body oh, and just totally. co- like combing everything over. Yeah. Once you, once we all have this figured out, I mean, you really won't even need medicine. I mean, people got along. In You'll the be your own doctor. Days, 500 years. They're living to 800 years old doing just <laughs> <Yeah>. fine. And <laughs> yeah. now all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. So super important then to verbalize your thoughts and feelings, especially because during this phase, you'll be really great at it. You know, so Mm -hmm. uh, heading into your concentration and creativity during this time, sometimes you might have a tendency to daydream. It's just so easy to chill with loved ones or in nature. Think summertime. Summertime is easy going. You're not in a rush. You really want to enjoy every moment and just milk it for what it's worth. So chilling with, you know, your loved ones or hanging out under a tree in nature can be a really great way to recharge the batteries from like the go, go, go of your previous phase the follicular phase. And also you're going to want to lean or you're going to be leaning towards more Venusian or aesthetic activities, like ones that tap into your feminine energy, like gardening, maybe entertaining some people at home, gathering some people home for a party, making some beautiful meals, or like sprucing up your surroundings, getting some new flowers, putting them in a beautiful vase, like maybe getting a new one of those water jugs for your nightstand, you know, with the glass, and those are like really beautiful and aesthetic. So you're going to be really drawn towards things like this. Like romanticizing your life. Romanticizing like the theme your here. life, yes. Make a real. Yeah, and hosting inviting friends over again because you're going to be radiating this warm energy that people are really going to be drawn to they're really going to be enjoying you at this time so it's kind of the best time if you're wanting to have a gathering do it during your ovulatory phase kind of in between your periods that's the best time to have people over hearing you talk has just inspired me to because you know how i love tracking so i want to write in my journal and track what i'm doing during these phases especially during mm-hmm. the ovulatory phase because it's such a short window and i want to see yeah. how i'm using it mm-hmm. i'm sure every month i'm doing something different but naturally i've noticed yeah. i go out more mm-hmm. and you're more I, open mm-hmm. to like social things absolutely totally the other phases like the follicular phase and luteal phase are a little longer so the they're, they're definitely a lot more noticeable, but yeah, the ovulatory phase, it can kind of like slip by if you're not paying attention. Mm-hmm. That's why I've started doing my ovulation like test kits just so that I get into the rhythm of like knowing that that's when is my most kind of fertile, not just in terms of a baby and pregnancy, but fertile for other areas in life. Oh, totally. Because life is, mm-hmm. it's all a manifestation. It's yeah. all, we're creating it, so... So talk about plants. Yeah. Again, all all of your concentration creativity is going to be geared towards all things love, beauty, communion and connection with others. I harp on the word communion because it's not just communication. It's like to commune with other people and do things with them so not just calling up your girlfriend but like maybe grabbing your friend to go on an errand with you or taking a new class with someone like bring other people into what you're already doing during this time and it'll be really really fruitful so 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 what are some plans eva that would be like an example of being more involved in community and commune communal vibes cool yeah i'd say now that you can tell that you're basically a social butterfly at this time this is Not only the time to hang out with your friends and to commune, break bread, have dinners, maybe even you have the extra energy to help a friend that needs you. Or if someone's your one of your friends is down, maybe you can grab them and take them to do something fun, Mm -hmm. because that's something that anytime you share your gifts and your heart with other people, it's going to radiate more and come back to you tenfold, as we always like to talk about here. Mm -hmm. And This also is actually a really, really good time to have important conversations. Maybe something that's been on your heart, right? Because this is a heart chakra phase that you're in. And as we all know, there's a lot of things that sit on our heart for months, if not years. And sometimes Mm -hmm. when you've already did the work in the previous phases, like journaling in your menstrual phase, reflecting on it, exactly. Mm -hmm. And you find something, you don't necessarily have to have that conversation in your menstrual phase, maybe you save it for your Mm -hmm. ovulatory phase. Yes. And this is a great hack that we've learned 
that we hope you guys will implement because there are good times and bad times in our cycle to have important conversations and tapping into that is going to make your guys' life so much easier. I can't even like recommend this enough because I think we all know that, you know, you can think about something one type of way and feel about it really, really strongly. But then 72 hours later, you're in a completely different headspace. Oh, always. Right? So, Thank God. <laughs> so I think we can all like take a little step back. And instead of being reactive or impulsive, just based off of feeling, we can really use that time when we're like the most stable, most confident, most communicative to really express the things that need to be expressed. Yes. In Emphasis a- on need to be expressed. Exactly. And in a loving way. You'll just find that you're a lot more loving. You're more tolerable mm. of things. Sometimes when you feel like maybe you're losing patience with someone or something has bothered you for a long time, you want to talk to them when you're in a space of love and acceptance and like everything is just good. You're living in your summertime. So you're like, this is barely even bothering me, but I need to mm. talk to you about it now. High it's optimism. my boundary. Exactly. So the other things you want to do during this time is maybe ask for a raise or (laughs) I love that one. Yeah, right. Use that testosterone surge to ask for a raise. Level up your life. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, if you guys ever want tips on how to do things like this or negotiation, these are the things that naturally I really love to talk about. So hit us up, slide into our DMs and I'll I'll give you guys like a little mini. This is what I would say. Mm -hmm. I love doing that as you know. But anyways, yeah, ask for a raise. Sit someone down with all of your confidence pre-plan the conversation ahead of time but also it's a great time to negotiate or to strike a deal on some Mm -hmm. level maybe you want to try a new project or you're thinking about starting a business of some sort well you don't need to go and open up an llc and do all these things just simply start with one person contact them and say hey i would love to try this out with you your energy is going to be so receptive during that time that the answer will probably be yes. And maybe you can get some extra bucks in your account. And what else? thing going on a first date is um, Mm -hmm. this is probably the best one. Yeah, this is the time. If I were dating, I would really only schedule. Also, too, because you can't spend your entire life like dating. Like, I mean, and I have a crazy filtering process, too. So, like, I'm only sitting down with people that are ready and my type of person so i would have that date during my ovulation phase Mm -hmm. number one because you look the best Mm -hmm. that you're gonna look during your cycle all of the little cells in your body are aligning Mm -hmm. for you and also because you're gonna be able to have a good flow of good flow of conversation and great tip have a first date in low lighting so think like fireplace or candlelight that's really gonna that because just makes you cuter yeah, it's going to make you cuter than like an overhead like fluorescent light. Oh, you know no, Walmart? I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, sometimes coffee shops aren't like, yeah. that much of a vibe either. But no, low lighting I'm... just makes things sexier, does it not? Yeah. And we're not doing coffee shop dates in 2023. <laughs> no, that's a friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh i'm here with my girlfriend <laughs> yeah. can i buy you coffee mm-hmm. and the last thing you guys want to do to wrap this up is just take on riskier riskier things your testosterone is higher at this time so you're going to have that masculine like confidence where you just take action yeah. and have a good time doing it yeah, drop some money on some stonks during your ovulation yeah. phase <laughs> During this time, you're going to be wearing things that represent a womanly feminine vibe. So think kind of flowing, timeless garments. Think a Grecian goddess. So accentuate your favorite parts of your body, the things that you feel best about, the things that you want to show off. You're going to spend a lot more time on your appearance <sighs> here. So not like, you know, in the menstrual phase when you're kind of like, you know, feeling a little more drab. Stop care. Yeah. You're you're actually going to spend a lot more time on your makeup. There's been studies, too, mm-hmm. that have been done to show that women take way more time. I definitely do. I've noticed that. On the ovulatory phase. And again, not because they need it, but because it's a lot more enjoyable to it like is. primp and prime. Mm-hmm. I'm just really into myself and my energy. Maybe it's also like mirror work, right? When you're... When people are naturally attracted to you, you're probably also attracted to yourself. So mm-hmm. being in front of the mirror and like seeing <laughs> like yourself. <a> <laughs> it's great. I love that self-love. Yeah. Near ovulation, women prefer to dress more revealing, obviously, and a little sexier. Probably goes back to that primal 
conditioning of wanting to find a mate and increasing your chances for attraction during that time. And you're probably also going to be carrying a bag with everything in it. Your, your maternal energy right now, you just want to be able to help someone if they need it. It's, yeah, you're going to have that warm motherly energy with your bag. You're, even though you're not on your period, you're going to have pads in there just in case someone is in need. So these are going to be that. your style Louis Things. Vuitton never full. Never, ever full. <laughs> and what are we eating during our ovulatory phase? Well, again, check out our grocery guide. Absolutely. <laughs> this one will have everything you guys need so you don't have to listen to me tell you. Mm-hmm. But during during this phase, you want to eat really, really healthy because your ovaries are are working and you want to make the the healthiest egg possible, right? And a big thing here is going to be healthy fats. As we always know, avocado is king, Mm -hmm. but also wild caught salmon, um, specifically from uh, the Alaskan waters, I've heard is a lot healthier. Mm-hmm. Have you researched that? Yeah, I researched salmon a lot back. Alaskan, I feel like is pretty. It's pretty far away, so I think that one is good. I also saw something along the lines of maybe. I think I saw something along the lines of maybe East Coast salmon doesn't have. Do you want me to say the p word? Parasites like oh, the yeah. West Coast salmon. It's an ick, but it's it's real. It's real. I'm like. Every time I go to the store and I'm buying packaged salmon, because I like smoked salmon. I don't ever buy it like to cook it. I want to get into baking salmon, but I'll go and I, I buy it in the package. And now I'm like carefully inspecting the packages if I'm going to see them. You know what I mean? I it's horrible. Oh I mean, I'm shameless. Even at restaurants now I'm looking. It's so scary. <laughs> but I did just buy a parasite tea from Higher Health. Okay. I'm really oh, excited. Yeah. They got you finally. <laughs> We've been following Higher Health for like four years. It's a whole bag, so we have enough for both of us. Amazing. We're going to get our parasites out, you guys. So moving on. Yeah. So what else What else is going to help stabilize your energy and your mood during this time in terms of food? Well, last thing, I just want to give you guys oh, yeah. a few more. Just tuna, oh. lamb, coconut cream, eggs. Those are all great things to eat mm-hmm. during this time. Good healthy fats. Yeah, I just don't want to leave them hanging with those other ones because <laughs> th- I eat that a lot. Salmon and that's it. <laughs> salmon and parasites. Let's go. Well, luckily, it's only a few days. So. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, like you said, there's lots of natural energy and you have a stable mood thanks to estrogen. So limit the intake of carbs here. Stick to lighter grains mm-hmm. like corn is a grain and mm-hmm. quinoa mm-hmm. quinoa some would say but yeah you know in previous cycles we were looking at, we were eating a lot of carbs but at this time we really don't need to we already have plenty of energy our body's mm-hmm. not necessarily taking on or preparing to do a grand mission mm-hmm. so you want to load up on veggies and fruits these will help metabolize and eliminate the surplus of estrogen that you have um, mm-hmm. boosting through your body at this time mm-hmm. so think summer which is figs, strawberries, raspberries, and spinach salads. Yeah. Yummy. What else? We have lighter food preparation. Yeah, we're still not like baking or stewing anything just yet. We're mm-hmm. still maintaining kind of Salad. like the spring, summer vibe to preparation. Salads. <laughs> Natural ice cream made with, with fruits. I love to yeah. do that with strawberries in the freezer. Something I love Wonder. adding into my smoothies during my ovulatory phase is maca root. So I get it in mm-hmm. powdered form. You can also get it as like a tincture or like in a little dropper. One thing I've always noticed is it makes my boobs and butt pop like it something You're about joking. it literally makes your adds to your own hormones which like increase those oh. areas and i've watched some youtubes of people who literally like went from pancake booty to like nice size because of mock root number one because it gives you energy to work mm-hmm. out number two it makes you hungry and also Watch out, though, because it can make you a lot more fertile, too. People have been using maca root oh, no. traditionally for fertility to get pregnant. I used to take maca root like, back in the day all the time, and you actually are the one who ruined it for me <laughs> by telling me that. I was like, ooh, <laughs> I need to stay away yeah. from that. This is not, I'm not ready. <laughs> but I, I can tell you guys noticeably when I add a scoop of it to my protein shake, I, I'm like buzzing around i don't even need coffee i don't need tea do you eat maca root throughout your the entire month or just no just so far i've been using it in ovulatory but i kind of want to see it let me see you if can i use it all the time use it the whole month yeah things work better when you use them the entire yeah. month so if you're using something more of like a, i'm not saying medication but a supplement kind of like is a medication so in order for a medication to work you have to use it every day so same thing with the supplement you know if you want it to work and see results you have to use it every day 
And what other foods? The other things are raw foods like sauerkraut and kimchi, which we love. Yeah, always got to keep the probiotics mm. pumping. My mouth is watering just saying <laughs> it. I love pickled things. So yeah, pickled veggies is really great. And you guys can do this yourself. It's really easy. Just chop up carrots or whatever and put it in a jar with apple oh cider God, vinegar. You just, you just reminded me to check on my pickled carrots. I'm going to do it after this podcast. We're going to try them. Yeah. Okay. They last forever. Yeah. So that's something fun and easy. You can just do at your house. You can literally pickle anything and it's going to be great for you during this phase. It's amazing on salads. I put on everything. Poke bowls I'll make at home. Throw Mm -hmm. that on there. So now alcohol, around day 12, your reward centers of the brain um, are a lot more attuned to the effects of alcohol. So this is a prime time when your addictions will show back up. You might be craving to indulge, right? Because it's summertime. So you and also have you're fun. hanging out with Your people. Your body wants to have fun, right? And you're hanging and out with people. it's a lot more people. social, so it can be a lot harder to avoid alcohol at this time and again the higher estrogen in your blood levels is making alcohol seem a lot more rewarding too in this phase which is kind of a little Uh bit of a trap it is a trap because that is actually a trap for 100 percent getting pregnant yeah exactly what your body wants you to do Uh uh-huh your judgment is down be happy they're going to heighten the receptors and make you a little bit more like not as um not as how do you say discerning also as you would be at another time Mm -hmm. or you know not under the effects summertime baby (laughs) summertime it's just you know people are just going at it so what do you think we should do with sports or physical activity so you're wanting to train hard during your ovulatory phase and again starting from when you're done bleeding start training hard all the way up until like your ovulatory phase even early luteal phase because it's this prime time for your body to rebuild those muscle fibers and for that work to actually go into something. Estrogen spike also gives us a boost of endurance, so we're a lot better able to push ourselves to the limit of those workouts and really go harder than we're used to. I feel that. You're going to be a lot more inclined to higher impact style workouts, even group setting style Mm -hmm. workouts. I know for me, I don't really like to work out in groups that much. I like the yoga that we went to at the shell. But as far as like if I'm weightlifting, I don't like to do that with someone else. But I could see how a group class could be really fun during your ovulatory phase, whether that's like Zumba or Mm. Pilates class, just not so much for what it's going to do for your body, but the connection that you're going to get to other people and the experience that you'll get to have working out with other people. Totally. I got, and Mm -hmm. then also I remember in the other phases we were talking about, there were chances of injury. Mm -hmm. What about during this time? During this time, uh, you're not like as how did uh, cut that out during this time women's knee joints have been studied and shown that they're actually looser during the time of ovulation so if you're just not being careful you could be a little bit more prone to acl injury that's the anterior cruciate ligament of your knee so that could snap just because your knees are a little looser (laughs) during ovulation i have no idea why that's why we're created like that but even though you're doing more higher impact things like weightlifting, plyometrics, running, definitely also be careful because, you know, mm-hmm. you could be more prone to injury in that area. My thought behind this, and it goes a lot back to the things I've read and Body Keeps the Score, mm-hmm. and that's all from like a PhD guy and uh-huh. all that good stuff. Our body, just like when our hormones are releasing at certain times to give certain things, it's also helping your joints or other elements in your body, which make them like weaker at that time. What so if your knee joints about... are weaker so that you can get into better positions? Oh, you got looser, right? <laughs> Everything's connected. I'm telling you. <laughs> God thought of everything. <laughs> That's the only thing that makes sense to me. What were you, what were you gonna think? I was thinking about how you told me how the, when our body keeps progesterone in our system until it finds out that we're not pregnant, yeah. right? And the progesterone is meant to protect the ovary, um, right? It the keeps egg the lining helps, yeah. there. Yeah. So I know that maybe that lining, right, is associated to other joints in our in our body. And, and then it's also making it looser or more lubricated, easier to that. get hurt. Oh my goodness, that. And then also, I don't know, maybe we're, we're reaching figured, yeah. here. Like, I'm Fact thinking check about, us. like, 
blood cells are made in bones and bone marrow. So like maybe they're, you know, floating There's out of there and here. going to your you just who knows. Stick with we're us. We're not guys. doctors. And <laughs> in like two years from now, because of course we're always learning more we're and we're gonna have an answer. People. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have the reason why all this is the way it is. We're gonna talk <laughs> to God. <laughs> Them loose knee joints, you guys, during ovulation. This is gonna be a really, really full circle moment when we find out why. <laughs> oh, that'll be great. We go all the way back episode yeah um this is nine nine. (laughs) yeah well that's actually really interesting too because going into your skin you're going to talk about estrogen assisting with collagen production which helps in your joints so yeah why don't you take over the skin and what what's going on with the skin why do we look so good during our ovulatory phase because of estrogen Mm -hmm. (laughs) so during this time because your estrogen is increasing finally the oil production in your skin is going to balance out your skin's going to have more of a glow to Mm -hmm. it this is also assisting you with that natural collagen production Mm -hmm. and i love in your ovulates in your ovulatory phase of course we're talking about magnetism and collagen's just been such a key word in the past three years we all go nuts soaking it up so this is why it's really important eat the right things and to work Mm -hmm. out in the right way so your body can work with you and Mm -hmm. you can increase you can have the most collagen during this time right if you miss out you if you're not eating the right things your body can't produce that for you yeah you got to help your body because your body's like hey we're in this phase this is what i'm trying to do for you Mm -hmm. help me out and like you kind of work together yeah that's a really great way of putting it absolutely so you're going to have radiant complexion at this time some women might experience breakouts it really just depends everybody's different so what really matters here is you tracking your own symptoms either in a journal or on the health you can put in your symptoms as well and after you have two or three months you can understand what's going on maybe you'll notice what you ate in a day and if you broke out or not those patterns will really start to jump out yeah but typically my skin does do a little bit better around the ovulatory phase and if you're feeling it this is the time to actually try something new your skin can take it your body it has been this is remember this is super bowl for your for yourself every month your body has been preparing for this one moment so this is the time to give it something new it won't shock your system your body's going to re- take it in very easily so what's a good example of like a like riskier facial which you've done right yes and i love i highly recommend i've done two of them and then now i'm just doing microneedling mm-hmm. but yes your skin looks looks bad yeah, after it's bomb definitely recommend so um things like that and then i think we're going to wrap up. Yeah, we're going to talk a little more about the last few parts of the ovulatory phase and how you're affected in this phase, how your processes are affected going into relationships and sex, and then also sleep. So your relationships at this time, people are gravitating towards you because of your warmth, your love, that sort of energy. We already covered that men are more attracted to women in their ovulatory phases for mating purposes. Obviously, there's been studies done on this Very, very interesting. And we are also more attracted as women to masculine features at this time. So we're picking out the men who have the stronger jawline, the taller height, the stronger arms, you know, just because evolutionarily or just the way that we're created, whichever way you're looking at it, we are meant to pick out the mate that can pass off their genes the best and survive the best in this world. Yeah. And we need them to reach that, reach those top shelves yes, in the kitchen. Yes, yeah. And we'll talk more about why being on birth control makes you pick more feminine men in a future episode. That's going to be a really, really fun I one. I can't wait for that one. So yeah, around your se- around your ovulatory phase, your sexual arousal is going to peak. You're going to feel it. And then it's just going to slowly start to dip off. And how are you sleeping in this phase? Sleeping. <laughs> 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 maybe leave it i don't know maybe it sounds fun okay <laughs> sleep is typically unaffected during the space i don't know nice. track lovely people, but mm-hmm. i think i've been having pretty good sleeps yeah when you're in your ovulatory phase everything's just perfect yeah honestly you're sleeping beauty sleeping through the night an earthquake can't wake you up your mm-hmm. man snoring won't yeah and also due to the like high levels of activity that you're getting in the first part of your cycle that means both the follicular phase and the ovulatory phase you're you're just doing so much and tiring yourself out properly that you're just gonna you're gonna be sleeping well 
unless you have sleep concerns stemming from other areas and those areas are meant to be checked out like stress or if you have something that your body perceives as a danger yes. listen to your body listen to the symptoms so to conclude our ovulatory phase episode for you guys we want to talk about the things that it can be a little harder to focus on in this phase. So when you're in your ovulatory phase and you're just kind of focused on feeling good and having fun, you can have a harder time focusing on detailed or in-depth thinking. Um, you, It might also be hard for you to not give away all of your time to others. So mm, saying no seriously. to certain things yeah. because you want to experience all the fun. You want to have all the social time. Yes. This can be a hard time to meet your own needs. You know, you have the maternal energy of wanting to take care of everyone around you, making sure everyone is set. So definitely make sure you're meeting your own needs at this time. Don't overcommit. Still be playful. Don't get too serious. And again, the not expressing yourself, it can really come back to bite you in the end when your PMS time is coming around. So definitely... Feel let your voice be heard. Yeah, feel into those emotions and let that voice be heard. Express express those things. Let them get out of your body so they're not hanging around. And the benefits that we get during this phase? Well, socializing, mm -hmm. <laughs> having a ton of fun, basically all the pros to the downsides. Mm -hmm. That if the everything's a balance, right? So just check in with yourself, reflect. But um, really tap into those supportive relationships joy having fun you're going to have a lot of empathy during this hot time and heartfelt mm -hmm. connections conversations with people you'll have this feeling of success radiating around you not only inside yourself but other people will feel it too mm -hmm. which again is why it's a great time to communicate ask for raises mm -hmm. put yourself out there but during this time, you're also going to have a feeling of acceptance of others. That's another heart chakra moment, family, homemaking events or activities, teamwork, group activities like your um, HIIT workouts or classes like cycle. And finally is beautification. You're going yeah. to be extra beautiful and yeah. attract all of your desires yeah. to you. What did you say about romanticizing your life? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and again, it's always important to note that not all women will experience the same effects during the ovulatory phase. And there's always the individual variations in the menstrual cycle. Some women might not ovulate regularly or even at all and may not experience these changes that we're talking about. It's also important to seek medical advice if there are any concerns about irregular or absent ovulation because it could really indicate some underlying health issues. Again, this is the Super Bowl moment of your month and if it's what your body was created to do. So if you're missing ovulation and if that's something that concerns you, then I would definitely go and get that checked out because these are all benefits that I think we all should be enjoying, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and we want to ask you guys to implement this in your own lives. Absolutely. So during this time, we really like to encourage the girls to pick their next ovulatory phase, the which is your fertile window in your tracking app. Or if if you are not ovulating, then you can just simply pick the full moon and that's your day. And from there, you guys... Let's give them a few ideas of what they can do for to expand more in their ovulatory phase and to illuminate more light on their community. For example, I already gave the example of hosting a dinner party at your place. Bring Absolutely, people over. Yeah. Pitch your big idea at work. Ask for a promotion you've been working hard for. Make some new exciting plans with your partner. Try something new in general. And just really have the most important conversations and those empathetic conversations that you want to enjoy with somebody. Yeah. And also reaching out to another creator. Maybe you've been watching someone on Instagram, TikTok, and you really like what they're doing and you want to collaborate with them. This is a great time to ask them if they want to work on something with you. For sure. So if you guys do end up doing any of these things, enjoy the moment, record it, take Make a reel or a TikTok. I'd love to see it. Share it with us. Yeah. And also, like, let us know how successful was your result? How good did you feel after? Do you have new friends in your circle now because you, you mm -hmm. stepped out of your comfort zone and you use that ovulatory phase to radiate that warm love and energy to other people? So we really hope that you'll have something new and amazing in your life as a result of you tapping into the confidence and magnetism of your ovulatory phase. Enjoy. We'll talk to you guys in the next episode. Bye. Bye. 
This show is intended for inspiration and entertainment and is not meant to replace your physician's medical advice. Music by Moon Blue. Editing by Alina Salsa.